Now we're gonna go down the line, just a quick question. How have you been enjoying Comic-Con Manchester? How has your day been so far? Okay, hello. So hello, uh, I'm actually uh, from Germany. I uh, come from Bavaria, that's Munich, that's München. And uh, yesterday I, have to, uh, I was uh, at a very special place in Manchester. They even have Bavarian beer. So I really enjoyed that very much. And they also have Schweinsbraten, which is a very traditional dish from Munich. That means uh, pork with uh, bones in that, a uh, very big deal. And so, yes, we had a good time yesterday. Uh, I think I should explain, uh, there's a place called Albert Schloss. We were there last night and that's where he got all of his German food that he's describing. Ah. Brings me to the question if you know uh, what wheat beer is. So it's very famous in Germany and I drank it in the US too. And it's made of wheat and it's very uh, healthy. You know, if you drink uh, three half of this wheat beer, you live 10 years longer. <laughs> Good health advice here at Comic Con Manchester. How has the Comic Con been for you, sir? This is uh, my first time in the UK. Oh, wow. So, um... welcome. And I can't get over how friendly and polite everybody is. So I feel very welcome. So thank you for having me. Yes, give yourselves a round of applause. Uh, hi, a uh, couple things, Peter. You were watching the cricket out your window? Uh, I've watched more cricket in the last uh, 36 hours. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty cool sport. At first I thought it's pretty boring, like they're just standing and they talk to each other, they shake each other's hands. and But uh, I've gotten into it a little bit. So, But I'm really looking forward to England-Germany Euro Cup tonight. Yes. There it is. Who's going to win? Right. England, oh. Germany. Germany. Uh -oh. right. England. England. Well, well, I think it might be 5 0 to 4 Germany, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's driving home tomorrow. If that's, if that's the case, you're not going to make it out of the country, I don't no. think. <laughs> yeah, we were saying he might want to ditch the leader, the later Hosen, on the way home. <laughs> Dead giveaway, uh, huh? Uh, I'm having fun. Uh, I've seen the hotel, I've seen the Albert Schloss. I've seen this and I've seen the airport. Uh, all well and good, having a good time. It's, it's all the sights, huh? Lovely to be, yeah, all the main major sights. Uh, not only uh, will he be driving, hopefully, well, we'll leave the, uh, we'll leave the ladies' euro aside, but uh, Michael is driving a bright red turbocharged 911 Porsche that he drives on the Autobahn. And how fast do you go when you drive there? Well, I think 10 or 20 miles. <laughs> Though actually Paris was uh, very excited because this car is really going like hell and it makes some 200 uh, miles an hour. And it was the fa fastest car produced in Germany when I bought f a few years ago. So Michael, in fact, drives that car 200 miles an hour. So if you see him coming, duck. <laughs> So that's, um, I don't do it uh, on my own, it's just I has my duty because I have to drive in two days from Munich to Manchester. Yes. And if I go there with 50 miles all day, it would take me a week. So I have to push it through, you know. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Rusty. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys. <laughs> Guten Tag, mein Damen und Herren. Bonjour, madame, messieurs. Connoisseur. Saudi cat. That's for all of you. Hello! I would like, to, first of all, to thank you for coming here to see us uh, because it's been an absolute wonderful experience to see you all. If you weren't here, we'll look very stupid sitting there talking to no one. But thank you, everybody, for coming here in the lovely city of Manchester, the holy city, as I call it. Thank you. Yes. Round of applause. The beautiful accent. Rust Rusty's uh, greeting is making me realize, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Cabaret, but boy, wouldn't that be a good role for Rusty? The MC in Cabaret? Yes. Oh, I could totally see it. Many years ago, 
Many years ago we were here, I was here working, and now I'm back. They say it was a cold day before we get him back. It's not bad today, is it? So I'm glad I'm here. Hang on, photo. <laughs> Did you get a good one? Great. Perfect. All we need now is an enlarged one. Right. <laughs> Well, I'd love to ask all of you individually how the opportunity to be a part of the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory film began. I mean, it's almost like getting a golden ticket, you know, pun intended. How did the role come about for you? Well, there, there was in the newspaper, there was a notice, we are looking for a nice, little, charming, well-educated boy. <laughs> and my mother said, of course, that it's my son. So she replied on this uh, notice and um, I was casting and, well, I got the job. Mm -hmm. And I lived in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, Midwestern United States, working at the Children's Theater at the Cleveland Playhouse. And uh, that was one of the theaters that the casting agency contacted because they had a well-known children's theater. Sure. A little fun fact, we filmed in Munich, Germany and at the Bavarian Film Studio and the film that came in after we were done was Cabaret with oh. Joel Grey and Liza Minnelli. Wow, what a tie-in. Joel Grey got his start at the same theater that I did in yeah. Cleveland, Ohio. So I was contacted um, where they asked the Playhouse if they had anybody that they thought they might recommend. My name was given to them. I was in the right place at the right time. I, I only made one film and this was it. I had a short career. Uh, I'm gonna say it because someone has to. The film is Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The book and that other film, which we don't really like to talk about, uh, was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I was a child actor when I started at six. Uh, actually, I walked into an agent's office because my mother was bringing my older sister in and she said, well, how about him? Maybe he'd like to, to do some auditions as well. And I started booking a lot of commercials at age six. So uh, I did a few years on Broadway, uh, a lot of commercials, some other stuff, but I was actually acting for five years by the time I did this. Um, my main memory of it uh, was being in a phone booth do you remember phone booths? There used to be phone booths. Uh, in the rain with my mother when I found out we were gonna fly to Germany and I'd never been to Europe before and to be in this film and we're jumping up and down and very happy to, uh, to do it. So yeah, that's how I got the role. Well, yeah, when I arrived in uh, Munich, I uh, went to the makeup and they put orange makeup on the face and gave me a green wig. Uh, that day, they thought every little guy was the same. So they made one size wick. So every day, it was like... And nailing it on. And it wasn't till the 25th anniversary. Uh, we was in, all in New York, and uh, we went to a chocolate factory. And the director, Mel Stewart, shouted, he always shouted, I want to travel with the ump. He used to call me the um. So him and I were in this limo, going down Fifth Avenue, uh, down to the chocolate factory. And there he said, do you know why you had orange face and green hair? Said, no, not at all. He said, apartheid. What? He said, yeah. When we were writing the show, the show there was a knock on the door. Guys came in and said, hey, I understand you're making a movie in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Is that the, uh, by that English guy, Roald Dahl, 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 Roald Dahl, Roald, Roald, Roald Dahl, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Is it in that movie you, look, you use little guys? Little black pygmies. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, black pygmies, yeah, he said. Well, you can't make the movie. You can't use the little black guys. Okay, said Bell. Okay. The guy walked out, he was very bullshit. He walked out, turned around and said, so what are you going to do about it? And Mel said off the top of his head, I'll give him orange face and green hair. 
So, okay, you can make the movie. Oh, what are you going to call it? He said, as in the book, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. He said, you can't do that. Why? Because the Charlie was the name the black slaves gave to the big white boss, Mr. Charlie. That was the name, so you can't use, okay, I'll call it Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Yes, you can make the movie. And that's a very true story. Some of you might have heard that before, but that's how it happened. That's how it's Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, not Charlie. That's why we orange face, green hair. Interesting. Yes, bravo. We love the behind the scenes information. Lisa's gonna go uh, to the fans now. If you guys have a question for anyone on the panel, I knew we'd have a lot. Oh my goodness, and look here in the front row, this cosplayer. Give, can you stand up and let everyone see you? Let's give a round of applause to this amazing cosplay. I think he won under 14s for that cosplay, by the way, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I got a question. What was it like getting your punishment? What was it like getting our punishment? Well, you didn't get punished. Maybe you should have gotten punished. I, I got yelled at. You I got, got yelled at. <laughs> you did get yelled at. Um, well, my punishment, as most of you who've seen the film will know, I get shrunk down very small. Uh, before that, I eat the, um, the exploding gum. I didn't really get punished for that one, but they did uh, yank. What they did is they tied a wire to the back of my belt and they yanked me into a bunch of pots and pans and it, they all fell down around me and all the metal pans, they hit me in the head and everything and I thought it was really fun so I was ready to do it again and I was like, okay, let's go again and they checked, the film was good, they said no, no, one time only so that was one kind of punishment. The other punishment that I got is getting shrunk down so they did several special effects there First, for the dots above our heads, they painted onto the film, they call it cell animation, and they painted the dots onto the film for the millions of tiny pieces. Uh, then I go over, I'm very small at that point, so they built a very, because there was no CG. There was no uh, computer graphics then, right? So, about the size of this actually, yeah, a big TV set with a black velvet uh, uh, floor and backdrop. So I'm walking back and forth there, and I jump down, kind of like Land of the Giants, if any of you are old enough to know what that is. So, okay, uh, then they had a little doll that he grabs. Uh, there's a quick shot of me dangling from wires. So I'm on wires while I'm hanging. Let me down from here, right? And then they take the little doll, they throw it in the purse. Then there's some voiceover of me saying, that you can't really hear, let me out of here, I'm taking your makeup and I'm spreading it all over the inside of your purse and I'm bending your comb and I'm like doing all the stuff inside the purse that you can't really hear. Uh, and that was my punishment. There you go, a lot of elements. They stitched together a bunch of elements to make that happen. How was, oh you didn't get punished? No. Michael, how was your punishment? Well, um, my punishment was uh, doing the scene falling in the chocolate river because um, uh, you know, perhaps when you learn swimming, you go to the swimming pool and you have to jump into the water to get any degree of uh, your, uh, how you can swim. So it was like this, jumping in the water all day long, but not in bathing suits, uh, but in leather trousers like this ones I have uh, on at the moment. So uh, this uh, sucker with wa full with water and it was uh, very, very heavy to carry. And of course, there was no good heating in this um, hall and it was very cold. And I have to do it all morning long, more hours, jumping in, jumping, uh, going out. The director Mel says, you should do it like that, you should do it like this, you should give me more light, you should uh, go with the camera a little bit too close um, and things like that. After all, I did it, um, I think it was noon, and it, I was, uh, it was very cold and it was dangerous too, because the chocolate river was just uh, 20 centimeters deep, like that, and I have to jump in a hole uh, like a square meter, that's like that. 
So um, I, have, I can see where the square meter is because, of course, the chocolate river was dark and I uh, can, can see through the water and I had to jump in and I was always so afraid to, head, to hit my head on the ground. But at the end of the day, everything was done. Uh, now, there, there are two of us who aren't here today. Denise is no longer with us. Julie uh, just had to go, by the way. You may be wondering, Julie Don Cole, who played Vile uh, Veruca, uh, had to catch her, her flight or her train or whatever, so she's not here. But there are two more punishment stories which we can tell you about if you want to continue with that. It, it's kind of interesting what happens to each of us. Why don't you tell either Julie or Violet, and I'll tell sure, the other one. Sure. Uh, Denise, or Violet, uh, blew up like a blueberry. And uh, similar to you, she had a, a pretty tough day filming. Um, initially, when she started to expand, she actually wore like a wetsuit, basically, and uh, air was put in and she expands. Cut, stop the film. Or well, they used a blue gel coat to make mm -hmm. it look like her face, her face was turned turning blue. Yeah. Face was turning purple. Stop, and then they had a very large styrofoam ball, huge styrofoam ball, of which they cut in half and put uh, um, Denise in the middle of it and then put her, her purple or her blue costume around it. And it was difficult to get her in there, and once she was in there, she had to stay in there all day long. <laughs> and they rolled her around, and it was a long day for her. Yeah, I mean, she would tell stories about, you know, it would be time for lunch, and the rest of us would be like, okay, time for lunch. And she was just like, okay, see you later. And they had to roll her to, so her blood wouldn't pool in different parts of her body. So they had to sort of flip her from time to time. And then um, uh, she used to complain that the Oompa Loompas didn't have their, their blueberry driver's licenses because they would occasionally bump a part of her into the doorstop as they tried to roll her out the door. So she had a very a rough day that day. Now, you were not driving. Uh, the, no. Blame it. We got the blame every time she was doing the Q&A. I know, I yeah. know, but you personally were not driving. No, I, I was guard. If you watch the movie, I'm directing. Okay. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> it was a short guy so that couldn't see over her. See what was happening. And then uh, Veruca, of course, goes... Well, well with, one oh, more story sorry. on the yeah. knees. Yeah. After that scene, she was done. Flew back home to New York. Oh, yeah, She's story. in New York, back in school, and it's a hot day. It was probably... October, early October, yeah. and uh, she starts sweating. And all this blue makeup started coming out of her pores from w what they had put on her two or three days later. So she remembers this dripping blue makeup. Days later in days America. Days later on her, so. Uh, the orange makeup came out as well. Did it? The orange makeup, is came that right? Well, yeah. After the fact? Yeah, but after the fact. After the fact, yeah, I redid it. Got it. So the orange makeup did the same thing. I mean, I assume that makeup technology then was not like makeup technology now, and so yeah. Um, Veruca. Veruca. Well, I mean, they had the they, they, they had the the chute that she had to climb up on there, and it would open like this. And they told her, uh, keep your arms in because otherwise they'll get smacked on the way down. Uh, keep your legs together. Um, don't lean forward or you'll hit your head. Don't lean back or you'll hit your head. And it was about this far off the ground, and it was about a six, I don't know, what is that, about a five-foot drop. So she, and they only did it once. They sent her up there, and underneath were a bunch of cardboard boxes that she then landed on. But they also assigned uh, one of the, one of the, 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 the son of one of the assistant directors. And apparently he was very cute. Blonde guy, I remember. And so she was concerned that he would be here waiting for her to come down and that she'd really have to make sure that she hit her mark. And uh, so that was it. Yeah, that's, that's the uh, Veruca story. We all had our little trials and tribulations. Thanks. Hi guys, what's your favorite memory of working with Gene Wilder? Favorite moment working with Gene Wilder? Yeah, my favorite was when uh, we weren't doing anything. Uh, 
Jean was lovely. We had so many days off uh, because it overrun the movie for days. But Jean was so lovely. And he noticed that some of the kids were there on their own. Julie, her parents said goodbye to her in London. Bye-bye. And she arrived in Munich and she met this woman that she never even knew who was going to be a chaperone. Uh, even stay in the same room with her. So, you know, a 10-year-old girl was quite upset. Uh, so Jean sussed all this out. And he used to read the kids stories. He used to tell them stories of his life, funny stories, uh, fairy tales, anything to make them kids. Think of kids again. And Judy's never forgotten that. And he was a lovely man. And we used to... So Oompa Loompas, who was sitting and listening to the stories as well. Because he was so, so interesting. And he was a sweet, sweet man. Such a sweet man. Ladies and gentlemen, in a minute, I've got to go because I've got a train to catch. I'm going to hand you back to these lovely people. Take care. Thank you once again for coming. Be safe. And one, I've only got one thing to say. Yeah. England! So we're on a staggered schedule. We're all just sort of slipping away, kind of like the children in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Don't uh, you know? Don't look. Don't blink. Or you know, I'll be. I think I'm next, right? Uh -oh. you're, you're it just next. seems like I'm next, right? I gotta watch my step. Uh, there's another thing that Jean did that was very nice, which is Julie uh, Veruca, Don Cole, uh, had her 13th birthday on the day that she did her big song and she eventually went down the chute. And so um, they, uh, they gave her a, a golden egg, which was very nice, and Jean arranged for a color photographer to be on set that day. So she has lovely color photos of that day. Uh, most of the, the still photography that was done on that film uh, was in black and white, and uh, they gave her a cake and everything. So he was looking out. He was looking out for us. Lovely, lovely man. Pro uh, probably my, one of my favorite memories of Gene is when I first met him. And I was in New York uh, traveling to Munich with my father, and this was a film that had just come out, and, and it, difficult to find, but a real gem. Quacks or Fortune has a cousin in the Bronx. Nobody's ever heard of that film. Filmed in Dublin, Ireland. Great film. I saw that. That was who I was going to be, my co-star in Willy Wonka. And uh, just had a very good uh, um, image of what Gene was going to be like. And he was. He was the first time he met me, um, gave me a big hug. And I had done all the running scenes. Charlie delivering the paper, um, all the scenes of Charlie running initially, because they wanted to do all the exterior scenes before fall and winter set in. And uh, Gene said, if I see you run one more time, I don't know what I'm going to do. Gave me a big hug, and we became, you know, very good friends. I was a rookie. Gene and Jack Albertson, they were the pros. and. Uh, they were my mentors. They, they really helped me, you know. Not a mean bone in his body or Jack. So nothing, there's no backstory. I had a great experience. I just moved on to different things. Any stories of Gene Okay, uh, um, of course, Gene Wilder was for me uh, some stature, some uh, unreachable person, um, I may say. I, I knew John, uh, Gene Wilder from uh, German TV already and now there is the star sitting next to me and trying to speak English with me. And uh, my English was uh, more or less absent uh, these days and we tried to make any conversation. I remember um, a newspaper interview where Jean tried to speak any German and I tried to speak any English and it doesn't work, but he was so nice to me and he was really professional and took me by the hand and said, everything's okay, we will do this. 
but um, my I have intense, intensive memories of Jack Elverstone, Grandpa Joe. Uh, you know, these times I was educated to go by tram. Uh, well, I had to, uh, uh, had to ride that they took me with um, any driver and limousine to the set. But uh, I was used to go by tram and so I did these days to the film. And uh, it was about a 15 minute walk from the tram station to the, um, to the set. And of course, uh, or not of course, uh, Jack Elveston stopped with the car and said, Michael, come in, you don't have to walk, I am on my way. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is so, was so uncommon in Germany that I found this so very nice that Jack Elveston showed me the American way of life. People are sticking together and everybody helps each other. That is, was really nice and that was new for me. So just uh, a little... Um thing to watch out for. Gene Wilder um, had Alzheimer's and there is a documentary that will be um, about Gene um, promoting the funds will be going to the Alzheimer's Society or Foundation. Um, that should be out very shortly. Um, I spent a day with the film crew um, discussing you know, my relationship with Gene. So that'll be out soon. So look for that. And for the Trekkies out there, I think Leonard Nimoy's wife was one of the producers, is that right? His, uh, her husband is one of the producers. Her husband, okay, yes. so uh, there's a Nimoy connection there yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 Did Gene Wilder give you any acting or life advice? And did you carry any of this forward with you? I would have to say... <laughs> I would have to say, yes. Um, our director was probably uh, not the most easiest person to work with, and, and so I would say both Gene and Jack and our dialogue coach, Frawley Becker, um, were kind of the directors, uh, the silent directors, so to speak. So they would often give me tips. I would redo, or not redo, I would go over the scenes with Frawley the night before, um, Mel was very good at saying what he didn't want or what he didn't like, had a difficult time saying what he did want. So there's a little bit of trial and error there. So both Gene and Jack did help me. And uh, I, again, I was, I was new. Um, the rookie on the... These guys were, were pros. I was, I was the new kid on the block, so to speak. Uh, I was the pro. I'm not sure Michael had ever done anything. And in fact, I don't think, Michael, you acted in anything before or after. Right, Michael? Uh, not really. Um, not done before. It was totally new. And afterwards, just two little side roles in German TV. So, so in fact, none of us saw each other from 1970 until 1998. We just all went about our own lives. I mean, I lived in New York City, Denise lived in New York City, so I saw her once, but in general, we just basically all went our own private ways. For some reason, the distribution deal on Willy Wonka and the translations didn't particularly reach France or Germany. Uh, the Spanish-speaking markets always knew Willy Wonka, the Italians, eventually Japan and China, other places, lots and lots of places, but for some reason, during that span of time, between 71 and 98, it was not very well known in Germany, where Michael was meanwhile growing up. So here it is, it's 1998. I'm approached by someone and I go to a con. I'm going to a, a Comic Con. We're all gonna be there and somebody, a super fan, a guy named G Gene Crowell is responsible. Someone finds Michael and they say, this is a story I've heard. Michael, you lived it. The, the, they, they came up to you and they said, what? You must know that the movie isn't famous in Germany, in Germany at all. In all German-speaking countries, it's not famous. So I made a, the film when I was 12 years old and everything was new and fantastic and a great experience and uh, seeing a lot of new things. But then it was done and it was passed and it was an experience of my youth. And so when they called me at the age of, uh, I say, 40, they said to me, hello, is this Michael Bell? And I said, yes, sir. 
And um, he said, uh, are you a film star? And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> And then, uh, after a little pause, uh, he said, uh, maybe you know the, the movie Wanka and the Chocolate Factory? And I said, of course I know the movie, I was part of it. And then he said, well, Augustus, we were looking for you, we have made a notice in the newspaper, show, show up. I don't respond on Augustus, my name is Michael, you know? So, I had, he said to me, you are on every uh, wall of every uh, video store in the US. You are a star. You are in uh, one of the fifth most seen uh, movies in the, in the US. And you have to come to Boston to meet the friends, to make interviews. Somebody is writing a book on you and things like that. And I said, well, okay, if you say that, then it's fine with me. So I am a star. Crazy, right? And we went to Boston right? and it All was great. All that time he had no idea, and then suddenly someone's like, yes, you're famous, come sign autographs, please. And, and there it is. So, uh, yeah, how about that? So, yeah. so um, it was the first time after 25 years when I met my colleague, uh, Charles uh, Kitts, uh, from the former time. We had a lot of talk to do. I first saw, after 25 years, the film again, you know, it was the time when you don't have video and you don't have DVD. So uh, the film was running all day long and I was standing in front of it and then watching the film and say, wow, yeah, 25 years ago, it was like this. Yeah, I did this. Uh, and it was really bombastic, of course. There were a lot of uh, guys from Warner Brothers who um, gave me a copy in a uh, German version on video, VHS uh, video, so maybe you, the other ones of you know this still. And uh, so I had my copy and can show my friends in, in Munich. It's like, um, it's like your childhood videos or, you know, I mean, those of us who are older, it would have to be like Super 8 film or something like that. But for the younger people, you know, obviously everybody's on iPhones all the time, there's movies, except that the difference is you've all seen our childhood videos. Like, it's all, it's a shared experience, not just with ourselves and our families, but you've all seen our home movies, so it's, it's an odd experience. Sorry, you had a question? We're going to go here, and then that will be our last question. Oh, you don't have the mic. Sorry. It's over here on the right. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a question for you. What was your favorite scene in the movie? Favorite I've... scene in the film? Yeah. I'll, I'll go first. I'll go first. Um, probably... Uh working with Jack Albertson um, when I first got to Munich after the running scenes, then we worked on, on our song, I've Got a Golden Ticket, and just doing that dance sequence with Jack. And uh, he was vaudeville, he was a pro. Um, one of the few actors, I think he's one of the only actors to win an Emmy, a Tony, and an Oscar. So he was, he was the real deal. So, but working with Jack, and when Charlie comes in and explains to his grandparents that he won the golden ticket in that dance sequence. So Jack was a Grammy away from what they call an EGOT, right? He just needed the Grammy. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pick the chocolate room because, wow, uh, they kept us away from it. It was in a room about the size of this room, except it had a much taller ceiling, I think. Does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Roughly the size of this, but they dressed all of it. You know, a lot of the times, I think these days, they would, you know, if they're looking this way, they'd have a little section and they'd make it look like a chocolate room and then they'd turn around and they'd, you know, they'd do some CG and that kind of thing. They just built it. They built the whole thing so that by the time we actually were at the top of the stairs, which they also built the staircase, and looking down, it was all there. The river was there, the boat was running, the waterfall was running. Uh, uh, the Oompa Loompas, you know, I mean, it was just all there, and it was an amazing sight. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to show it to us for the first time ever so that they could capture our, capture our actual reactions to this amazing set that they had built. By the way, the set was built by Harper Goff, who built the, the uh, Nautilus from uh, Captain Nemo and other Disney things. Um, so they did, and we all had an actual first reaction to the set, except for Veruca, 
who was invited by Harper Goff previously, do you want to go see? And she was like, yeah, I want to go see. So she, she went there and they ate a little lunch by the river and so forth. And uh, so she, she likes to say that she was the only one that was acting <laughs> in that scene. And for many years, she didn't have the guts to tell Mel Stewart, the rather yelly director, that she had essentially snuck in there early to see this amazing set. And years later, oh, I don't know, maybe 2003, something like that. Years and years later, we were in New York City, we were doing an event, and she told him. And, I mean, I'm seeing at least a couple kids here, so I can't tell you what he said. But he, he was not happy. He was like, you, what? You know, and off with the yelling again. But uh, that's when he finally found out that she got an early peek at that set. So I'll pick that scene as my favorite. So for me, of course, uh, was uh, also the scene when we go into the chocolate room. Um, you must know um, there is uh, growing uh, sweets everywhere. You have a whole river full of chocolate, a waterfall of chocolate. Everywhere is chewing gum and things like that. You have, if that was, would be real. It was fantastic. It was, it was uh, the wonderland of the world. And this was so nicely done that you really could have the impression that that's everything is real. And some things are very even eatable, as you saw it on the film. But uh, if all would be eatable, fantastic. I could spend uh, years in a room like this. Yeah. Um, well. We have a few questions. My mum's here. She has a question. Only one, though. Sorry, thank you. So, I know you said that you don't talk about it, but what were your thoughts when the remake happened? Like, did you hate it? Did you like it? Or were you just indifferent to it? I, I would say I was kind of indifferent. It was a completely different film. It's, if you like Tim Burton, it's great. Um, but it's, it's just, it's in a different playing field. So I'll, I'll let it go with that. But I will say it actually helped our cause because many young people saw it. Their parents knew that their kids had seen it and said, that's great, but you need to see the original. So it introduced a whole other uh, group, a, another generation to us. And how many of you know that there's actually a prequel being made as we speak? with Tim, Timothy Chalamet, am I pronouncing that right? Yeah. Um, Wonka, and so that's you know what happens to early Wonka, um, tracking down the Oompa Loompas and getting the factory. So that'll be out in 2023. So that'll probably uh, generate more interest in Wonka. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. You that can't, the story, the story's successful because of Roald Dahl and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. So. It, uh, we had a lot to live up to. Uh, that movie, by the way, I think principal photography is done on that movie. It was shot in England, and uh, the guy who directed Paddington Bear is directing it, and the producer is David Heymans of Harry Potter production fame. So, uh, Should be good. Should yeah, be I hope. Good. I mean, again, and sort of that was my reaction last time. Like, oh, wow, interesting. I hope it's good. Uh, wasn't a huge fan of it. I... I thought that they focused, um, they focused uh, more on Wonka's character this time, and I felt that his character was very removed and neurotic, uh, whereas Gene was odd, but he also had sort of that heart of gold thing that he shows at the end, and that didn't happen at the end. I missed that in the new film, that moment, my boy, you've done it, you've won, and Everybody cries and, you know, he's actually a good guy. At the end, there's a scene where he, in, in Charlie, where they're in the factory and I think he, like, succeeds in, like, passing the salt to someone or touching their hand or something, and that's, like, his breakthrough. So it was, it was kind of odd. And uh, There were a couple things I did like. I liked the boat, which was sort of like a spun glass uh, seahorse thing that I enjoyed. And I liked that they showed the kids walking out of the factory and I was all stretched out like I was like from the book. Um, anyway, I could go on, but I, I, wasn't, I wasn't crazy about it. Sorry. So, um, I, think, uh, I think the same as Peter. It is a 
is simply a different story. But um, there is one really good of the remake, Entschuldigung, <coughs> sorry, uh, that um, Johnny Depp is in there. You know, the kids, uh, the girls in Germany love Johnny Depp. And so the story of Willy Wonka gets, got famous in Germany too. So when I said I was part of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, oh, they said, yeah, this is Johnny Depp thing. No, <laughs> I say the original one, of course. You're an OG, as they'd call you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have to let them get back, but we want to say thank you so much for your great questions, and thank you all for the insight and the amazing behind-the-scenes aspect of it, which we really appreciate. It's a part of our memories as well and our childhood. So give it up one more time for the cast of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yes. <laughs>